Hey you guys, welcome back to Waiting on God. My name is Karina. Thank you for being here with me today. If it's your first time here, welcome. If it's not, thank you for coming back. Your love is deep, deep like the ocean. You set me free, my heart is open. You gave me life, you gave me purpose. You make me dance because joy comes in the morning. Today we have a video that uh, I don't even know what to say. Today we're going to talk about striving. That's our topic for the day. Um, just a little quick rundown. I came to Christ in 2017 and um, this whole time. I've been striving <laughs> this whole time up until late last year somehow I've been striving and uh, it's something that the Lord if you see me looking this way it's because my notes are here so for years now the Lord has been bringing it up to my attention um, that I strive and not in a good way. I strive to get to him. Um, I've been well aware of it for a while. I always think that just because you become aware of something, then that's it. That's you healing and, and, and letting go and all that stuff. And that's just not the case. I've learned that. That is not the case. That he brings things up to deal with it. And it's up to us if we want to deal with it or not. We can't just like, oh yeah, thanks for letting me know. Okay, it's done and over with. It's not how it works. Um, I honestly, I would probably do a minor changes, you know, like, okay, uh, I won't condemn myself for not praying for an hour or I won't condemn myself if I didn't pray for my food, whatever it gets. You know, I'm just kind of exaggerating there, but um, a lot of condemnation and a lot of striving. And... Um, to be honest, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do or I didn't know how to stop, I guess. Um, I, again, minor changes, but it's not like I was really dealing with the root issue of striving. Huh, interesting. Um, the root of striving. Okay, because as I've been preparing for this, that has never come up. The root of striving so that's interesting um, and it's definitely something that I need to take to the Lord I don't know why those words came out of my mouth I didn't think of it having a root so okay we'll go with it um we need to figure out what the root of our striving is I need to figure out what the root of my striving is um, but let's just go to the basics okay um, what is striving? Striving is the act or practice of trying hard to do, reach, or achieve something. Vigorous effort. So, practice of trying really hard to do something, reach something, or achieve something. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we've been saved by grace. We did not work our way to salvation. We cannot work our way to salvation. There's just no way. Um, and I knew that up here. I knew that I'm, I've been saved through grace, but somehow this was not aligning. Um, I didn't, I had to read for a certain amount of time or not necessarily for a certain amount of time, but I couldn't, I had to read on a daily basis. And if I didn't, then I would condemn myself. Um, I had to pray a certain amount of time, not necessarily a long period of time, but um, five minute prayers were just not good enough. Um, I had to worship on a daily basis. If I didn't do any of these things, or maybe 
one of these things, then I wasn't as close to God as I should have been or I could be. That is all that I would tell myself. And so it forced me to work my way to the Lord um, when I just really didn't need to. I'm just, you know, from my experience, like it just, it would do something to me and it would mess with my head. And then I would just feel like I was not close to God because I didn't do those things. Um, and that's just not how the Lord is. So when we talk about striving, the act or practice of trying hard to do, reach or achieve something slash vigorous effort, I think of Elijah, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Let's go to 1 Kings 18, 26 through 29. So they took the bull which was given them and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon. They called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon saying, Oh Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. Started yelling for Baal. Hear us, Baal. Then they started leaping at the altar, jumping up and down. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves, as was their custom, with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them. And when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, but there was no voice, no and no one answered, no one paid attention. So they cut themselves, they were jumping up and down, they kept screaming at Baal to pay attention to them, and nothing. There was no answer because he wasn't real. Um, that to me is just the perfect picture of striving. They were striving to get the attention of Baal. Um, and all that Elijah had to do, let's go and see what Elijah had to do. Um, let's go to 36. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. All Elijah had to do was say a simple a simple prayer, pretty much. I mean, he didn't do much. It was a few words compared to the screaming, the cutting, the dancing and leaping and jumping around. All it took was him praying to the Lord. That's it. And so, um, for me, that's just, it just, it, you know, it, 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 it's, Funny in the sense of thinking back at everything that everything I went through, you know, just to kind of keep my relationship with the Lord. Uh, clearly, I wasn't understanding grace and I wasn't um, I wasn't really getting to know who he was, really, because if I was really getting to know who he was, then I would have realized that I didn't have to do all that. So I had difficulty receiving his grace. I also felt disposable. That was something that kept me going, uh, that kept me striving, was the feeling of being disposable. If I didn't do something right, if I didn't do... Uh, something for long enough if I didn't do this if I didn't do that if I do it wrong he's just gonna kick me to the curb 
and raise another and I didn't want him to raise another in my place so I kept striving to please him goodness I always had to be busy in the things of God otherwise came the condemnation again it's just it's exhausting <laughs> As I think about everything that I, I would do or how I felt, um, again, it's clearly not understanding who God is. So even though I would read and write down maybe who God was, it wasn't piercing my heart. It wasn't doing what it needed to do in here. Um, it was just kind of being filled in here. Um, but you can have all the knowledge in the world. But if you're not walking in the spirit, it's kind of pointless. Um, the Lord will use that heart. The, he will use you. Um, he doesn't need you to be all knowledgeable. He doesn't need you to know everything. He just needs you to be obedient, um, to be willing to be used, I guess is what it is. That's it. Knowing who he is and knowing, knowing who you are in him. That's um, it. Um, when was the turning point? The turning point was actually when I went to my trip in El Salvador, <laughs> which was just a few months ago. Um, it's amazing because the, those 10 days that I was there, um, I hardly prayed. I can't say that I prayed much. Prayed in the morning for a few minutes, prayed in the evening for a few minutes because, you know, thanking him for waking up, thanking him for the day and getting us home safely. Um, that's about it, to be honest. It was, I, I just, there was kind of no time. I mean, I was spending my time with my family. Um, and even though I wasn't really getting into my word, I probably, I did, you know, read my Bible a couple times a few times I tried to at least read something every single night um, but there was nights that I just didn't because I was too tired um, but he still showed up I saw the favor of God over us for sure or yeah I saw the favor of God over over me um, there was deliverance that took place And there was a moment within the family that we were able to pray and he showed up and I realized 10 days had passed and I didn't really read. I didn't really pray much, not saying it's okay, but I had to go through that for him to show me that even though that took place, he was still with me. He didn't go anywhere. But my heart was still wanting him. Um, and I was trying not to condemn myself. I was trying not to feel guilty because I wasn't spending time with him. Um, I missed him. That's for sure. But I'm so glad that all that took place because I was able to finally break free from the striving. Now I don't condemn myself. Uh, for for things that I used to condemn myself for I am NOT just because I maybe feel distant doesn't mean that uh, he's far away um, and now it's more of trusting him through those little moments like uh, that maybe you feel that I feel distant uh, trusting him that he's gonna get me out of that whatever is going on he's gonna get me out of it and it's he has it under control but sometimes we choose to not put him first we choose to not read we choose to not pray we choose to not worship we choose it that is our decision um, sometimes we choose to let things um, around the house to distract us there's times when he's calling your attention and you choose to ignore that and keep doing what you're doing. That is different, okay? I'm not talking about um, just relaxing and 
doing whatever you, you know, praying whenever you feel like it or praying whenever you remember. Um, it's in a transformed heart. I mean, what is it? Faith without works is dead. Right? I think that's the one. Yeah, James 2, 14 through 26. Now, do I know this in its context and its full understanding? I don't. I'm not even going to pretend to. Um, but faith without works is dead. It's not saying that you need to work your way. It's not saying that. Um, I do believe that the more you surrender to the Lord and the more you are uh, a willing heart, a willing vessel, that transformation that begins to take place gives you a heart and a passion to work for the Lord, to do things for the Lord. So it's it's kind of like a cycle or it's something, it's, uh, it, you know, it goes hand in hand. And the closer you grow with Him, the deeper your faith grows, the more you want to do for his kingdom. I just want to add that when I talk about doing things for the Lord, it includes everything from prayer to surrender, to worship, to obedience, to stepping out in faith, stepping into our calling and not just serving at a church. Anyway, that is all I wanted to talk to you guys about today was um what i went through this whole time dealing with striving and i know i'm not the only one i know that many of us do many of us deal with condemnation many of us deal with rejection we don't accept his grace um even though we think we do we probably struggle with it and so i want to pray for us in that area um, so Lord God, thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, God, for the patience that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, because you want to spend eternity with us. You do not want us away, away from you. You don't want us apart from you. And so I am so grateful that you have called us, Lord, that you have chosen us because it is you who chooses us. We don't choose you, Lord. You choose us. And I'm so grateful that we get to call ourselves children of the Almighty God. Um, right now, Lord, I lift up all my brothers and sisters in prayer, um, especially those dealing with striving, dealing with rejection, dealing with self-condemnation. I lift each and every single one up to you, God, and I pray that you just, that your love overflows in their life, God. I pray that you dig deep and that you uproot whatever it is that needs to be uprooted, Lord, whether it's rejection, um, the condemnation, that you get to the root of it all, that you bring healing, that you bring deliverance, God, that you show us what you want from us lord you don't want us to just strive for you because you are we already have your attention lord we don't need to do everything that the prophets of baal had to do all we have to do is call out to you and you are there and we thank you and we praise you for that lord so i just i pray for my brothers and sisters god that um that we get to the root of everything that we get to the root of the rejection that we get to the root of the of the condemnation and the striving lord and that we deal with it and that we allow you to heal us um to heal us you have begun a good work in us lord and it won't be completed until the day of christ jesus so may we not be striving for perfection lord because it's never going to happen May we just accept your grace, accept your mercy, accept all the love that you have for us, Lord, and allow you to transform us, Lord. 
We thank you. We praise your holy name. We exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. And in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I will see you soon. Bye.